Hello guys, good evening. I am Elon Bowen, Axie.com online man, personal for teaching zoology. So last class we said something about the method of sex determination in different groups of organisms. Now let's see something about how far the characters controlled by certain genes located in the sex chromosomes, how far they have been inherited by the individuals. The topic sex linked characters. So what do you mean by sex linked characters? Normally we have a number of characters. For example, the size of the body, the color of the body, the nature of the hair, curling or straight, or the nature of the yellow, etc. These are all called as the body characters, the external characters as well as you have the internal anatomy also. So most of the body characters are controlled by the genes located in one of the autosomes out of 44. But there are some characters whose genes are located in the sex chromosome and whose inheritance follow the sex. And those characters whose genes are located in the sex chromosome and follow the sex during inheritance are called sex linked characters. They are nothing but the body characters not concerned with the sex of the individual. The autosomal characters or the somatic characters, the morphological characters or any anatomical characters not concerned with the sex determination. And such characters are called sex linked characters. And those genes controlling such characters located in the sex chromosomes are called sex linked genes. Sex linked genes. And these genes are present both in the X and Y chromosomes. But we have more autosomal characters or body characters are controlled by genes localized mainly in the X chromosomes rather than Y chromosomes. Now, so accordingly we have two different types of genes, the sex linked genes. Those genes located on the X chromosomes, whose normally alleles are absent in the Y chromosome are called X linked genes. Suppose, so let us assume this is the X chromosome and this is the Y chromosome, normally smaller. So X and Y. Let us assume a gene category located in number one locus responsible for controlling a particular character. And normally in autosomes, we have a pair of homologous chromosomes. Suppose I am taking the first pair of chromosomes. Let us assume a gene, capital B, in one position. Now the another member may have either capital B or small b genes. That is the alternative allele or the same gene being present in a particular locus, for example, number one. This is concerned with what we call the somatic chromosomes or the autosomes. But in the case of X chromosomes, suppose I am taking a particular gene is located on the X chromosome. Say an example here, it doesn't have a corresponding allele in the Y chromosome. In that place, we don't have any gene. So, a gene located in the X chromosome but doesn't have an alternative allele, either capital A or small a in the Y chromosome in the corresponding position are called just X linked genes. Suppose let us take the female. So in the case of female we have two X chromosomes. I am taking the gene capital A once again in one of the X chromosomes. So this A gene has an alternative allele or the same allele in the next X chromosome. So the X chromosomes have corresponding allele. But if I am taking one gene in X chromosome it doesn't have its corresponding allele in the Y chromosome. Now let us take a, again male. I am taking Y and then X. Let us take a gene in the Y chromosome. Say an example of capital C gene. And that gene may not have an allele in the X chromosome. So if we are taking sex linked genes between the X and Y chromosomes, if a particular allele is localized in X chromosome, it doesn't have a corresponding allele in the Y chromosome or if you have a gene localized on the Y chromosome, it doesn't have, it doesn't have a gene. It doesn't have a gene in that X chromosome. So no corresponding allele either for the X chromosome or for the Y chromosome in the next chromosome. This is normal concept. So we have corresponding alleles in two X chromosomes. 
but we don't have corresponding links with x and y. If you have one gene present in x chromosome, there is no corresponding allele in y. Or if you have one particular gene in y chromosome, it doesn't have a corresponding allele in x chromosome. So those genes located in x chromosomes, whose alleles are absent in y chromosome, are called X-linked genes. Now this is an X-linked gene. Similarly, those genes located in y chromosomes, whose alleles are absent in X chromosome, are called just actually the Y-linked genes. This is one concept. In some cases, in a rare instance, say an example of X and Y chromosomes. This is X and Y. So normally you know that one. The X chromosome is longer than Y chromosome, short and thin. In some cases, we have X in X chromosome, we have a particular G. We have a particular G, say an example, E. So this is X and this is Y. So we have a G X. So let us see my A and G A in X chromosome. So it may have an alternative allele in Y chromosome. So this part is actually similar to the autosomes in some cases. A particular gene in X chromosome has an alternative allele in the Y chromosome. Now this part is the remaining part. So here we have only the X linked genes and the Y linked genes. But in this case, this part, what I mentioned, the upper part, we have a gene in the X chromosome. It has its corresponding allele in Y chromosome in a rare instance. So if we have a particular gene having its allele in Y chromosome, then we can say these genes are called XY linked regions. And such regions are called homologous regions and also called pseudo autosomal regions, incompletely sex linked genes. Such genes having allele both in XY chromosomes are called XY linked genes, incompletely sex linked genes, and also pseudo autosomal regions. So these regions are just like what is called the homologous paraautosomes. And normally the X linked genes or the Y linked genes do not form a pair. There is no crossing over is possible between the X and Y linked genes normally because we have only just one gene in the X or in the Y chromosome. But in the case of this XY linked genes, there is a possibility of crossing over between them because they behave like the autosomes. They behave like autosomes as they have alleles in both X and Y chromosomes. They form a pair, they cross over, and that results in a recombination also. So there is actually the difference between the X linked gene, Y linked gene, with that of XY linked genes. So XY linked genes behave like the autosomal genes, they form a pair cross over producing recombinations. But the X linked genes or the Y linked genes do not form a pair. There is no pairing possible between X linked gene and Y linked gene. And that is why there is no crossing over is also not possible. There is no recombination. So we have X linked genes, Y linked genes and XY linked genes. So genes located in sex chromosomes controlling body characters are called sex linked genes. And those genes located in X chromosomes whose alleles are absent in Y chromosomes are called X linked genes. And we are using, you know, that one, the genotype. So, in the case of genotype, we have the words homozygous, heterozygous, and also a new word. But I would like to give up a word what is called holozygous. Holozygous. And Hemizygous, holozygous and hemizygous. So what is the meaning for holozygous? So the individuals may be homozygous or heterozygous. And these two conditions together call holozygous condition. So both homozygous and heterozygous conditions together call us holozygous condition. Now normally the X linked genes or Y linked genes are normally either holozygous or hemizygous. So, as for the females concerned, we have two X chromosomes. We have two X chromosomes. Suppose we are taking a particular gene 
again I am taking the gene A. The gene may be of the same type in another X chromosome. Then the condition is called homozygous. So here the females are homozygous for a particular gene. In some cases, again I am taking the female, a gene A in X chromosome. So it has a corresponding allele small A. This condition is called heterozygous. We have already seen in the case of autosomes. Homologous chromosomes carrying identical genes together constitute a homozygous condition. Then the homologous chromosomes that carry different alleles on a particular locus in their corresponding position together call us heterozygous individual. So this is a heterozygous condition and that is a hollow, sorry, homozygous condition. So, so from these diagrams we can see the females are either homozygous or heterozygous or x Females are either homozygous or heterozygous or x genes. Now let us take the male individuals. So they have one X chromosome and one Y chromosome. I am taking once again the gene A. I mentioned earlier normally the X chromosome doesn't have a corresponding allele in the Y chromosome. So I am just actually writing a hyphen. Or let us take off again the female, sorry, the male X chromosome and Y chromosome. I am taking the recessive gene. Here also there is no corresponding allele in the Y chromosome. As the males have only one gene for a sex-linked character, that too it is located either in X chromosomes or in Y chromosomes. Here I represent only the X chromosome. It may also have genes on the Y chromosome and there is no allele in the X chromosome. And hence the males are called hemizygous. Hemizygous is the condition in the case of male, as they have only one X chromosome. We have only one gene for a particular character. There is no corresponding allele either in the Y chromosome or in the X chromosome. So, so the females are either homozygous or heterozygous for the sex linked characters, whereas the males are hemizygous for the sex linked character, as they have only one X chromosome. This is concept regarding that is a sex linked character. Females are always holozygous and the males are hemizygous. That is the reason why, why actually the males are more prone, ready to accept the genetic disorders, those disorders localized in the X chromosomes. That is the reason mainly that is hemizygous condition. As they have only one gene, if you have any recessive gene, for example, in that X chromosome, that character is expressed, it is not being suppressed because of the absence of a dominant allele in another either in another Y chromosome. That is why most of the males are very prone to, that is, the characters, the recessive X characters of the disorders or the diseases. Now, so anyway, the males are hemizygous and the females are homozygous. Now, we have the genes already located, I mentioned just about that one, in Y chromosome. Such genes located in the Y chromosomes. And no corresponding allele the X chromosome are called Y-linked genes. They are also called as phalandric genes. The Y-linked genes are also called phalandric genes. So normally the Y-linked genes are expressed only in the male, exclusively in the male, because only the males have Y chromosomes. So those genes controlling the body characters located in the Y chromosome and they are present exclusively in males. Because the male cell would have the white chromosomes. Now, the concept of X linked genes or Y linked genes or simply the sex linked characters was first reported by T.H. Morgan in Drosophila. He studied in Drosophila the eye color. So, regarding the eye color, there are different shades of eye color in the case of Drosophila red, white, orange, yellow, and apricot, violet, pink, etc. They have many shades of eye color more than 8 shades of eye And later he observed that in 1910, genes for eye color and body character located in X chromosomes and follow the sex during inheritance. That was the just a major contribution by him. So, in the case of Drosophila, we have eye color. The eye color is either red. We have many types of eye color. I am taking two red and white. 
So the red is normally just a dominant or white color. As per the Mendelian inheritance, if we make a cross between red and white, we are getting red. This is possible. But as per the sex linked inheritance, we are getting different results. Though we are getting actually 3 to 1 ratio the monohybrid ratio. And uh, what is the nature of the eye color in the case of female? If we make a cross between a red eyed female and a white eyed male, or if you make a cross between the reciprocal, reciprocal crosses, for example, white eyed female and red eyed male. So the results are different. So I will come to this later. Before, let us take some of the recessively extended characters in humans. And most of the extended characters in humans which cause disease are nothing but the recessive genes. They can say, actually, sorry, they are considered as recessive extended genes because they cause the disease. And most of the recessive genes located in the next chromosome, they cause the disease. So, highly that is vulnerable individuals are the males because they are hemizygous. Now, so the concept of sex linked inheritance was first reported by T.H. Morgan regarding the eye color in Prosophila while making a cross between red and white. He obtained the result, but the characters follow the sex during inheritance. Now, what are the general characteristics of X linked or just Y linked genes or generally sex linked genes? So, number one. So, normally we have either recessive or dominant X linked genes. Let us consider recessive genes. So, because most of the characters in man are caused only by the recessive genes located on the sex chromosome, namely the X chromosome. So, normally the same process also for Y chromosome. The X-linked recessive characters follow criss-cross pattern of inheritance or zigzag inheritance or just what is called skip generation inheritance. So what is the meaning for that one? Suppose the male has a particular character. That character is passed on to the second generation. For example, the father is having a character. That character is passed on to the second generation, namely the grandson only through his daughter. So there is no direct transmission of characters from male to male or from female to female. There is a via media. There is a mediate. So the sex linked characters from father normally is transmitted to his grandson, a generation of second, only through his daughter of first generation. That is called what is known as script generation. As it is happening, father, daughter, son or mother, son, daughter. It is taking place in a zigzag manner. Father, then we have just actually, that is daughter and then son. So in this manner, normally the character has been transmitted. There is no direct transmission from father to grandson or from mother to granddaughter. And it is always transmitted to the opposite sex. So, that is why it is called a zigzag inheritance or skip generation. So in this one, the characters from the parents are inherited to the second generation or transmitted to the second generation to the carriers of first generation. So I like to say what do we make a So normally, as per the sex linked characters concerned or excluded characters, the females are considered as carriers. The females are considered as carriers because they have two X chromosomes. I mentioned already, they may have similar genes in both X chromosomes or they have dissimilar genes. That is opposite hand. So this is a homozygous condition and that is a heterozygous condition. So here, see that one, an individual which is normally the female, which is normally a heterozygous, as the individual carries a recessive gene for that character, she is said to be a carrier. So a carrier is nothing but a heterozygous individual, that is a female, which is normally carrying the recessive gene for that character. So she is called as a carrier. So the homozygous individuals are not considered as carriers. The heterozygous females alone considered as carriers because they carry the recessive gene for the expression of the trait. Now I mentioned just this exact inheritance. Let's have an illustration as given here. See that one. A character from male, so father, male, is transmitted to his grandson, once again male, 
wire dot P. So here there is a transmission of characters from male to male via female. So there is no direct transmission. If it is transmitted directly, then it is called phalandry. Male to male, then the condition is called phalandry condition. So or in the case of the next one, what is represented here? Mother, female, the parallel generation. She transmitted character to her granddaughter, once again female of the second generation to the carrier here, nothing but son, the male. See that one in the first case, the characters are transmitted from male to male via female. The second in the second case, the characters are transmitted from female to female via male. So as it is happening in a zigzag manner, it is called crisscross inheritance. So in one generation, the character is not actually expressed, it is being normally hidden. That is why it's called a skip generation. The character has been skipped and expressed once again. So even in the case of, for example, one character by name Hemophilia, and that was normally followed in the case of royal family members, it was observed in the case of Queen Victoria. She transmitted the character to her grandson, actually to her actually a son, to her daughter, and both are normally the carriers. So their genes have been transmitted to the son, that is normally the grandson. And first, he, actually the gene has been transmitted from Queen Victoria to her son. And then from her son, it is being transmitted to the next generation onwards. The name of the person, your father, you, the son, that is son of uh, Victoria. So we'll see that more later about the hemophilic conditions. Anyway, any character that has been transmitted from father to grandson or from male to male by a female or from female to female by a male, then such Inheritance is called this exact inheritance or crisscross inheritance or skip generation. So most of the recessive explained characters, we can say almost all, all the recessive explained characters follow this crisscross pattern of inheritance. If any character is transmitted from male to male directly, then it's called phalandric, phalandric process. And if any character is transmitted from mother to just actually from female to female, then it's called phalogenic, phalandric, phalogenic. So these are all different mechanisms related to the transmission of explained characters. It's on the fundamental one. Let's go with the examples. Now, what are the different types of explained characters in the case of human beings? We have nearly more than 150 recessive explained characters in humans. But one of you are notable as per the examination point of view. And they are also highly dangerous, causing death or causing damage to the human life. So I explained that why many genes do not undergo pairing or crossing over during meiosis. What I mentioned, only the XY linked genes or the XY that is what is called incompletely six linked genes or the pseudo autosomal regions only form a pair and crossing over. And there is no crossing over, there is no pairing between these X linked and Y linked genes. Now we have more than just 150 recessive X linked characters in humans. So out of this one, we have maybe there is six one colored lines. So it is technically called achromatopsia. 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 Another one, hemophilia, that comes later, bladder species. Then hydrocephalus, a kind of congenital muscular dystrophy. G6 PD deficiency syndrome. Dachene muscular dystrophy, the famous one nowadays is very common. Just like the answer of disease, more and more in the case of children, particularly in the case of boys. And lastly, congenital nectalopia or night blindness. So you'll see one by one, color blindness. Because there will be more importance for this color blindness and hemophilia as per the examination point of view. Now let's take the first one, color blindness. So you see that one. We can able to differentiate the colors. That is, for example, red, green, and blue. These are all the three major colors. What we can able to distinguish. For seeing different colors, we have three types of pigments found in the cones. You know the photoreceptor cells in the retina. One, the rods, another one, cones. 
The rods are concerned with the dim light vision and the cones are concerned with the color vision. So we can perceive three different colors, major colors. Other intermediate colors are because of the interpretive functions of the brain. It is a brain which normally interprets the different colors so that we can see the other intermediate colors. But the eyes perceive only three different colors, major colors. One, red. Two, the green. And the third one, the blue. So these are all the three major colors what our eyes can perceive. And for that we have three different types of pigments found in the coats. What are the three types of pigments? One, erythrolate. Erythrolate. This is the name of the pigment for perceiving the red eye, red color. Then the green, chlorolate. This is the name of the pigment. Chlorolabe and for blue, cyanolabe. Cyanolabe. So, these are the three different types of pigments found in cones concerned with the perception of the red, green, and blue colors. So, normally, even in the animal kingdom, see that one the butterflies and bees they can see actually super they have what is what we can say super color vision and compared to human beings they can differentiate all the colors better than human beings butterflies and bees because they have to approach the flower the different colored flowers for honey for food that is why in the animal world including human beings we are just to say normally the bees and the butterflies have more ability to see the colors than human beings so they have super color vision and even the monkeys, they have the ability to just differentiate colors for finding out the ripe and fruit and ripe and fruit. And also the birds, you have also many fishes for mating purpose, they can identify the different colors. Now, so the cones contain these three types of pigments. And these pigments are under the control of the dominant gene control C. This gene is located on the X chromosome. The gene is located on the X chromosome. Suppose if this gene undergoes mutation to become a recessive gene. Now the retinal pigments are not produced. The person is unable to produce a particular pigment or perceiving a particular color, either red or blue or green or all the colors. So, because of the mutation, the dominant gene has been converted into a recessive gene. So, the person is unable to differentiate different colors either one color or two colors, all the three colors. Accordingly, we can have different types. That leads to what is called color blindness. So the reason for color blindness, recessive X-limited gene. The recessive X-limited gene is expressed in the case of males. So, males are more prone to color blind. Normally, there are no color blind females at present in age. What is the reason why the males are more prone to color blindness? For that, you have to look into the genotype. Suppose you are taking the female individuals. So, there are three different types of females. This is one genotype. This is another genotype. Though we don't have any color blind people, but we have to take a color blind people also. Now the first one, normal individual having two dominant genes. The second one is also normal but carrier. Normal but carrier. The third one, color blind. Why there is no color blind female? Now normally fertilization occurs, the individuals are developed, but they will not be born. So while embryonic development occurs, while this recessive gene is found in homozygous condition, when the recessive gene is brought together in homozygous condition, it becomes lethal. It causes the death of the individual. So once the embryo is formed, because of the lethality, lethal effect of the recessive genes, the individual dies. That's why I say there is no color blind female in this world. Formed, the individual will be formed, but it dies because of a the recessive character because of the homozygosity of the recessive genes. So we have three different genotypes for female. Homozygous, normal, heterozygous, normal or carrier. Then we have homozygous recessive affected individual. Then, so we will take the male. So I am taking the male now. 
Why males are more prone to? That is what is called this character, sex linked character, recessive character. X and Y. Let us take the color white. So this is the normal individual. So they have only one. Gene. So in the case of men, there are only two genotypes. Unlike the females. So a recessive. As there is no corresponding allele in the Y chromosome, now this gene expresses itself individually that resulted in the disorder named the color blindness. So, X linked genes follow crisscross pattern of inheritance. This is fact number one. Number two, the X linked genes are holozygous in the case of female and hemizygous in the case of males. Number three, the males are more prone, ready to accept the character because they are heavy samples. This is number three. And the last one, the males always receive the recessive x linked character from the female. Because in the case of male, there is no corresponding allele. The male receives this gene, small c gene, only from his mom. From his mom. So, the males always receive the recessive x linked gene only from these are the four conditions you have to remember about this x linked characters. So accordingly, we will take how far the character has been normally transmitted. Now, so I mentioned already, we have the condition of color blindness is called achromatosis. So some people are color blind to red. Such people who are unable to differentiate red color are called protonopic type, proton type. So, we have actually, there are three different types of color blindness. It's normally mentioned just it is more frequent in the case of males than in the case of uh, females. So, in a total population, we have some statistics. It affects nearly 8% of the males and only 0.4% of the females. This is because of the hemizygous condition of the male. That is why the frequency is more in the case of male than in the case of female. So, because the genes are located on X chromosomes. Because the males have only one X chromosome, the females have two X chromosomes, they may be homozygous or heterozygous, but the males are only hemizygous. That is why the frequency is more in the case of males than in the case of females. Now, so I am just taking four marriages. What would be the result? So, for marriages, what are the result of daughters and sons? Now, and before that, you see, I mentioned already there are three different types of color. Some people are color blind to red. Some people are color blind to green. Some people are color blind to blue. Some people are color blind to all colors. So accordingly, we have just four types of color blindness. The first type, those unable to differentiate a perceived red color. So they are color blind to red and such people are called protonopic and the condition is called protonopia, color blindness to red. And similarly, some people are unable to differentiate green color. They are called deuteronomic. Deuteronopic and the condition is called deuteronopia. Deuteronopia, color blind to green. Some people are color blind to blue, that condition is called tritonopia. Tritonopia, color blind to blue. So if the person is unable to see all the colors, if everything appears as gray as in darkness, then that condition is called monochromish. Monochrome. So we have four types of color blindness, either to red or to green or to blue or to all. Here everything appears protonopia, deuteronopia, tritonopia and monochromation. These are all the four types. Now let us see how far the character has been transmitted in four different marriages. Then we can answer any question in the case of problem. Now I am taking just answer the four marriages. Marriage number one. I am taking father as born. So, in the case of that is why representing actually the genes, it may be represented like this, 
that is capital C hyphen or it may be represented by this capital C the superscript for example writing here x superscript capital C y superscript hyphen or in the case of a uh, female for example capital C capital C so the x chromosome and the genes are represented as superscript or it may be like this simply you can represent instead of just writing the x chromosome so I am taking normal father then color light then what would be the nature of this there is a clue also in a family you know that one there is always contradiction between father and son this is a clue only for two it's not actually a common procedure to find out the answer for problem of color blindness so normally it is happening in the family there is always there is no coordination cooperation there is no synchronization between father and the son they are together never work they are always deviate one is going this side and another is going that side like that this is only for clue i am saying it is not so hard just to forget so if father is normal, we are taking the opposite sex, mother is colorblind, we are taking normal there. Since there is no colorblind, actually for convenience to find out the problem, we are taking that is colorblind mother. So father normal, then mother is colorblind. I mentioned already, if father is normal, definitely the son will be colorblind in such a process. That is opposite. Father normal, son will be colorblind. Now take the reciprocal cross. Here the second one, father is colorblind and mother is normal. Here you see again there is contradiction. So always opposite, son is always opposite. So when father is colorblind, definitely the son will be normal. This is the clue. So father colorblind, son will be normal. Father normal, son will be colorblind. Then what about the daughters? Whether father is normal or colorblind, whether mother is normal or colorblind, the daughters will be carriers. See that what in both the cases. Number one and number two. So Either father is normal or colorblind, or mother is normal or colorblind, you can have the daughter's cancer. This is one concept. Nothing would happen. Even in the case of Drosophila, when red eyed female is crossed with white eyed male, all flies are red. Females are red, but the males are red. But the parent, you know that one that is white. So, when actually the eye color in the case of also Drosophila white, then it's Progeny. The males are opposite color, red. If males are red, I red eyed character, then definitely the first generation, the males are white. That is the thing happening, the same method we are found. The same condition also prevailed in the case of hemophilia. When father is normal, then the son will be hemophilic. When father is actually hemophilic, the son will be normal. This is the condition. Both for any explain the recessive pattern. Now I am taking the next one. So in the second and third case, I am taking mother is carrier. So whether father is normal or colorblind, if you observe one's mother is carrier, the son of a carrier woman always 50% chance of being colorblind. So in a monohybrid cross, you know that one, so we are getting 3 to 1 ratio. 3 is to 1 ratio. That is a monohybrid cross. And here also you are getting, suppose, we are considering only the monohybrid cross only. So in the F2 generation, let us assume there are 4 children. So out of the 4 children, as per the sex determination, you know that one, there is always 50% chance of being, you know, you know that one, either male or female child in each pregnancy. So we have, out of the 4 children, definitely we have to assume 2 males and the remaining 2 are females. So, let us assume in this marriage, for example, mother is carrier, we lease by the father, whether he is normal or colorblind. So, in such marriages, once if mother is carrier, definitely 50% of the sons would be colorblind. That is, out of the two males, one is colorblind. Release by the female, let's come to the female later. So, the son, if mother is carrier, so the son of a carrier woman always has a chance of 50% being colorblind. So out of the two sons, one is colorblind, one is normal. Now, so what about actually the daughters? Suppose you want to look at the daughters in such classes, you have to look at father. So if you want to know the nature of the sons, you want to know the nature of the sons, you look at mother. 
If mother is carrier, definitely 50% of the sons will be colorblind. How to do one is color. And if you want to know the nature of the daughters, father, you have to look at father in such a process. If mother is carrier, if father is normal, definitely all the daughters will be normal. So there are two daughters. The two daughters will be normal. But out of these two daughters, one definitely will be carrier. That is constant. Out of the two daughters, one is definitely cat. So, if you want to know the nature of the sons in such marriages, carrier mother, then mother is carrier 50% normal, 50% color blind means. Then in that cross, in that marriage, if father is normal, definitely all the daughters will be normal. Now let's go to the last one. If mother is carrier, again constant. If father is color blind or normal, it is bother about the means. So once we say mother is carrier, definitely in both cases is that one fifty percent chance for color blind. Then about the daughters, I mentioned already if you want to know the nature of the daughter, you look at father. Their father normal, daughter normal. But in the second case, if father is color blind, definitely fifty percent of the daughters will be color Out of the two, one is color blind. And the another one is normal. That normal is always carrier. See here I mentioned just we have all normal, two daughters normal, out of this one is normal, one is carry normal. Here one is color blind, another one is normal, and that normal daughter is also carry. So, so they are asking problems like this only. For example, in marriage occurs there will be a carrier mother and a normal father. What would be the probability of color blindness in that family among the sons, among the daughters? Suppose for example, question number. So here, marriage between a carrier woman and a normal father. What is the probability of color blindness in that family? Out of the four, only one is affected. So we have 25% chance. Then among the daughters, we have zero. Totally, we have 25%. Out of the four children, one is affected. So 25%. Among the sons, we have 55%. Then among the daughters, zero. This is answer. So I am taking for us a marriage between a carrier mother and a colorblind father. What is the probability of colorblindness among the sons? Again 50%. Among the daughters, again 50%. Then in the total family, again 50%. So among the sons 50%, among the daughters 50%, in the whole family, out of the four, one male, one female affected. So here in all these cases, that is in the family, among the sons and among the daughters, you have that is 50% probability. So, this is the clue by which we can answer any questions. And for example, a marriage. So, a woman whose father was colored white, a woman whose father was colored white, marries a normal man. What is the probability of color blindness among the sons? So, a woman whose father was colorblind, when you say father was colorblind, definitely that mother, what we are taking for the cross, is nothing but a carrier. That is a clue. A woman whose father was colorblind, in such a manner only they are giving the problem. So, you have to answer in that manner. So, once the woman was actually born to a colorblind father, even for colorblind mother, definitely she will be a carrier. See, there is another statement. So, you see that one, the female is never colorblind unless unless her mother is carrier and father is color. So there is no color blind condition in the case of a daughters or female unless her mother is carrier and father is color. This is also understood. So the son of a carrier woman always has a chance of 50% being color blind. Then the daughter is never color blind unless her mother is carrier and father is color blind. Definitely if Father is color blind and mother is carrier, there is always 50% chance of probability of color blindness in the female also. But the child will die so. So based on this one, we have a number of problems. See that one, the son of a woman carries the genes has 50% chance of being color blind. So your daughter will not normally be color blind, I see, unless her mother is a carrier and her father is color blind. That is a lost marriage. So this Color blindness nature was first reported by Wilson in 1911. 
The pedigree of color blindness was reported by Hornman, the next person. So it was first reported by Wilson in 1911. But the pedigree analysis of color blindness was given by Hornman. So pedigree of color blindness was first described by Hornman. I mentioned this is actually the true concept. The male is always recessive, recessive, extremely character only from mother or from female because the males are chemisides. So this is another concept. This is the question also. Males always receive recessive, extremely character only from mother. See in the case of sex determination, you know that one. The males always receive X chromosome from mother. The same concept. Males always receive X chromosome from the mother, the same concept. The males always receive recessive experimental character from his mother. Whereas you see that one, the daughter always receives X chromosomes both from father and mother. That is the concept what we have in the case of sex determination. So these are some of the things actually even the color blindness is also called daltonism or proton effect. Daltonism or proton effect. Now hemophilia. So it is a close character similar to that of what is called color blindness. One question also came in the question paper which one of the following disease is closely related to closely related to color blindness hemophilia. So it is also called bladeless disease. It is also called bladeless disease. Because the persons affected by this disorder, there is no clotting, the blood is continuously oozing out. This is because of certain reasons. And this disease was first reported in royal family members. As they have the same gene pool, as they are having marriages among themselves, so we have this disorder most prevalent in the case of royal family members. Queen Victoria's family, Prince Alphonse of Spain, so Queen Victoria normally transmitted the character. Just actually. So she is acting as a actually she acted as a carrier. So anyway, as they didn't have any actually marriage, that is, you know, we can say it like this, there is no gene flow between the Queen's families and the normal lay people. Because they never took actually, that is uh, either right or groups from the lay people. They are taking always just one from the aristocratic families, either king's families or queen's family. That is why the gene is always circulating among themselves. That is why it is always there in the case of such families. That is why it is called as royal disease, bleeders disease or royal disease, as it is prevalent in the case of uh, actually the royal family members. So again, it is more common in men than women. So in the case of actually color blindness, there is no birth of color blind individuals because that embryo itself baby times. But in the case of this hemophilia, the child is born, the female child is born, so she is attaining puberty. She is normal up to puberty. Once attaining puberty and menage, what will happen once the onset of menstrual cycle, there is a continuous bleeding and the child dies. So the female lives under the age of puberty. But in the case of color blindness, the child dies as soon as actually it is formed in the embryonic stage. Now, so what is the reason for hemophilia? The blood fails to clot. The normal clotting time, as per physiology, by chemistry, human beings, 3 to 5 minutes. The normal clotting time, 3 to 5 minutes. But in the case of hemophilia persons, the clotting time is delayed. It is even more than 30 minutes. The hemorrhagicus, by the time what will happen, the individual dies because of the last cell. That is the reason why we have actually the people affected by hemophilia soon die. This is because of the loss of blood and due to the absence of certain factors responsible for clotting. Now, I mentioned all it is also called bladeless disease or royal disease. What is the reason for that one? So, for clotting to occur in the human body, roughly we can say there are 13 major factors named as factor 1, 2, 3, and so on. For this study, for example, there is a Fibrinogen, calcium ions, prothrombin, thromboplastin, we have hegemon factor, stomach factor, that is a plasma, thromboplastin, antecedent, like that we have so many factors. So in the case of hemophilia, there are two major factors are taking part. Number one factor A and number two factor nine. So accordingly, we have two types of hemophilia. So Queen Victoria transmitted, that is what is called hemophilia B, to her son, Leo, Leopold. 
So, there are two types of hemophilia, hemophilia A and the one hemophilia B. Hemophilia A is due to the absence of factor 8, factor number 8. And this factor is called AHF, also called AHF. AHF, anti-hemophilia factor. Anti-hemophilia factor, AHF, anti-hemophilia factor. So it accounts for 80% of the hemophilia person. Suppose 100 people are affected by hemophilia, 80 people are with A. So because of the absence of this factor A, that person has hemophilia A. Another type we have hemophilia B, it accounts only for 20% of the affected person. The reason for the development of hemophilia B, absence of factor 9, plasma thromboplastic component. Plasma thromboplastic component. The component is absent. And this factor 9, the original name, the chemical name, plasma thromboplastic component. But the factor is also named by a nickname Christmas factor. That is why the disease is also called Christmas disease or Xmas disease. Hemophilia B also called as Christmas disease or Xmas disease because the factor 9 is also called Christmas factor. So that is about Hemophilia A, Hemophilia B. It also follows recessive x mingling inheritance as in the case of color blindness. And again, who was the first person reported? John R2, that is in Queen Victoria's family in age, not 3. But the pedigree of the color, sorry, hemophilia was first reported by Hawley. Color blindness, Horner, this one Hawley. Now, the third disorder, what I mentioned, hydrocephalus. And before that, we have to do, take this word, what is called the muscular dystrophy. The third disorder, because it is a part of the body. So, what is muscular dystrophy? So, normally we have one protein, what is called dystrophin protein. It is produced by the gene, what is called DMD gene. That gene is responsible for the production of the protein, dystrophic protein. What is the role of that protein? That protein is responsible for the transmission of the impulses from the surface of the muscle to the sarcoplasmic reticulum in the muscle where calcium ions are stored. So for the release of calcium ions, the impulses have to be transmitted. That is performed by this protein, namely dystrophic protein. When this protein is absent, then there is no conduction of the impulses, ultimately we have the disorder, muscular dystrophy. No other one, the largest gene in the human body is the dystrophin gene. Largest gene in the human body is the dystrophin gene. It contains about maybe 2.4 million nucleotide bases, the largest gene, dystrophin gene responsible for this protein. So we have two types of muscular dystrophy, an inability to walk. The muscles, the skeletal muscles are affected. So there are two types of muscular dystrophy, generally speaking, but actually we have three types, congenital muscular dystrophy. So, Dachene muscular dystrophy, this is one type. Have the name. Another one, Becker's muscular dystrophy. These are the two types of dystrophy, generally. We have also congenital dystrophy, congenital muscular dystrophy. Now, the DMD is the most severe one. The answer is, at the age, it affects mostly the males. The answer is at the age of 10. By 10, the child uses braces for walking. By 12, at the age of 12, the child uses the wheelchair. By the age of 25, the child acts. So 10, 12, 25, the different stages. It's the most severe. And then the next one, the Becker's, it's a minor one. It doesn't cause much harm to the body. Becker's. Becker's muscular dystrophy. I mentioned congenital muscular dystrophy. So in the case of congenital muscular dystrophy, some more functions of the brain are present. The brain becomes malformed. So if it is malformed, we have, for example, one condition hydrocephalus. So hydrocephalus is nothing but another type of muscular dystrophy where the brains become malfunctioned. This is because of the accumulation of water in the there is another type of that is congenital, just in relation to this hydrocephalus, mesencephaly. Mesencephaly. This is another kind of what is called congenital muscular dystrophy. So, muscular dystrophy, that is, Bachelin and the Becker's 
and then we have conjecture dystrophy and it may be lysencephalic or hydrocephalus type. In these two cases, brain malfunctions occur. Then we also, for example, we have some types of muscular dystrophy, myotonic muscular dystrophy or lymph girdle muscular dystrophy, LGMD, lymph, lymph. The affected limb, the post limbs are actually, you see what is called the posterior limbs and the high limbs are affected and the girdle is also affected. So, limb, girdle, muscular dystrophy or myotonic muscular dystrophy. So, the limb, girdle, muscular dystrophy, the myotonic muscular dystrophy, both are caused by the autosomal genes, not the sex limb genes. So, it may be dominant gene which causes or the recessive gene causes. So, if it is caused by a recessive gene in the case of LGMD, the onset is severe, the onset is in the case of children as well as in the case of teenagers. If it is caused by the dominant gene, the onset is in the case of adult. So this is what we call the autosomal genes, so we will least follow with that one. Now the next one. So hydrocephalus is a type of uh, congenital, what is called the muscular dystrophy. Now congenital night blindness. See normally the night blindness is caused by actually Nectalopia because of the deficiency of vitamin K. Then it is called simple, normal night blindness or nectalopia. But in some cases, the recessive gene present in X chromosome is also responsible for the development of a night blindness. Such a night blindness caused by recessive gene in X chromosome is called congenital night blindness. So, unlike the deficiency of vitamin A night blindness, so this is congenital, transmittable, or heritable. Now, the next one, G6PT deficiency syndrome. So, this is nothing but enzyme deficiency. Glucose 6-phosphate dehydrogenase enzyme. Glucose 6-phosphate dehydrogenase enzyme. That enzyme is responsible for one, just actually responsible for catalyzing one reaction. In the case of hexose monophosphate pathway or glucose phosphate shunt, monophosphate shunt or Dickens pathway. That's right, some third standard students in botany. Dickens pathway. A special type of pathway is called the Dickens pathway or hexose monophosphate pathway. Hexose monophosphate pathway. There is one enzyme, glucose 6-phosphate dehydrogenase. That enzyme is also found in animal body, human body. And now this enzyme, when absent, what will happen? The hemoglobin becomes crystallized. It becomes actually leading to the rupture of arteries. Once it becomes crystallized, it results in the rupture of the arteries. Ultimately, we have the disease. So the person also dies because of the absence of the enzyme. Enzyme is responsible for one of the, the reactions in the hexose monophosphate pathway. So RBC becomes crystallized and then rupture. Now this is nothing but actually the recessive excellent characters. Now we have the Hollandic Harvoidic genes. So these genes are exclusively found in the males. And some cases they are causing disease. And some of them are one, hypertrichosis. This is not a disorder only condition. In the case of male made of seed. This is the yellow. So on the rim of the yellow, we have long hair form. This is what is called hypertrichosis. In the case of males, one you could see this one. And also we have another disorder, ichthyosis hysteris. These people are called porcupine men. These people are called nicknamed porcupine men. Because these individuals have, you see that one long straight hands, straight hands on the surface of the body or we have small dry scales as in the case of a actually porcupine but not as in porcupine so they are commonly known as porcupine men having straight hairs, stiff hairs on the surface of the body and also just we have some scales and another one the webbing up toes between the toes we have membranes of form that result in webbing up toes so these are all the main even we have for example white arms of contains TDF Testis development phantom, another holandric gene, TDF gene. This is also the holandric gene, example for not the disorder, TDF, 
Testis development factor is an example for holandic G, holandic G. Sadas so or the disorders, and that is hypertrichosis, the condition, not the disorder. Now, how can you know that? Actually, see here is an illustration how far the hemophilia and C. I mentioned already if mother is carrier and father is normal, I mentioned there is no chance of color blindness in the case of B. Father is normal. But here mother is carrier, then definitely there is a 50% chance of color blindness. Suppose we are taking another B. So father affected, affected father. Affected father. Then what would be the probability of color blindness? So even among the so here there is no change. Whether father is normal or affected, if mother is carrier, definitely 50% of the boys are affected, or the males are affected, or the sons are affected. Then in the second case, I am taking affected father and carrier. Once the father is affected, definitely 50% of the females have color blind. Definitely. So in the family, 50% color blind. Among the daughters, 50%. Among the sons, 50%. Then in this cross, just value count. Mother is carrier and father is not normal. There is only 25% of the people are affected in the family, the probability. But among the sons, we have 50. Out of two, one male is affected. This illustration shows how far the recessive character has been transmitted if mother is carrier. Then, how do you find out whether you are color blindness or not? There is a test. What is called color blindness test? It's a color blindness that is compatibility vision test. Color blindness compatibility vision test. We are taking what is called pseudo chroma plate. This is the plate where you have the dots of different colors. The name of the test is called IC Hara test. The test for color blindness is called IC Hara. Even you could do that one. Take a white paper and draw a circle and put dots of different colors of green, red and blue. If you are able to differentiate all the colors, we are not color blind. That test is called IC Hara test. Now you see that one, if you are not color blind, you can see the number 6. Number 6 is there. So that color, so all the mosaic forms of color, we have the dots, but the number 6 is there. So if you are able to just identify, then it is actually you are not a color blind. So this is one of the tests, what is called ICR test. So color blind, color blindness, actually what we have, color blind vision test. Compatibility test we test. So with that I concluded the six limited characters. So we also have six limited characters and six influenced characters. And these characters are not controlled by the six limited genes. These characters are not controlled by six limited genes, but autosomal six. Autosomal genes. For example, six limited characters. These are all autosomal genes present both male and female, but limited to one sex. For example, presence of beer in male, presence of breast in female, these are all called sex limited characters. In some cases, we have sex influenced characters. These are all caused by autosomal genes once again, present both male and female, but whose phenotypic expression is different in different sexes. In one case, it is acting as a dominant. Another case it is acting as a recessive character. For example, a form of white forelock, the absence of lateral incisors, and also, for example, the premature baldness in the case of male. So, the baldness character is an example for sex influenced character. The presence of beard in male and presence of breast in the case of female is an example for sex limited character. So these are some of the characters but not confined to the sex chromosomes but controlled by the genes located in the autosomes. So with this I conclude this chapter. If you have any doubt, you are asked first. You are just you are, uh, uh, you are actually you are supposed to ask a question and answer the questions. Then if you are not able to ask, ask any questions at present, send the questions and post it online. Thank you.